I'm so happy you could stop by for a cup of coffee. Hey, I couldn't pass up a chance to get together one more time before the kids are out of school. <laughs> Can you believe summer vacation starts in just 10 days? I can't. And you know something? I'm busier now than I was at the beginning of the school year. Oh? I've been helping a couple of friends with some IEP issues. Oh, I'm sure those friends appreciate your help. The advice you've given me this year about Alex's program has been invaluable. Well, thank you. I'm always happy to help. One of the friends I'm working with now is dealing with a very tough situation. Her daughter will be transitioning to middle school next year, and the new IEP team wants to put her in the life skills class, which is a more restrictive placement for her. All through elementary school, she'd spent most of her day in the regular education classroom. She's only pulled out to work one-on-one -on -one with the learning support teacher and the occupational therapist a couple of times a week. This young lady has Down syndrome. Uh, well, if she's doing so well, why does the IEP team want to put her in life skills? Isn't that a more restrictive placement? It sounds illogical, doesn't it? The middle school principal seems to think that the more intense curriculum and the frequent changes of classrooms in middle school will be too overwhelming for this particular student. The principal also thinks she needs to focus more on vocational and self-care skills now that she's getting close to transition age. Well, vocational and self-care skills are good things for her to learn too, aren't they? True, but there are plenty of opportunities for her to learn those things in the regular education classroom. If the right adaptations and accommodations are made by all of her teachers, she can gain vocational and life skills by participating in classroom activities with her non-disabled peers. I see. Well, so what can parents do in a situation like this? I mean, it sounds like there's a major difference between what they want and what the school wants for their child. Yes, the two sides seem to be worlds apart at the moment. It looks like the parents are going to request mediation. Mediation? Mm -hmm. I didn't even know that was an option. Yes, the procedural safeguards ensure parents the right to request mediation when they're unable to resolve an issue with their school district. Okay. Well, I can imagine that it's a pretty grueling and expensive process, though. Actually, it doesn't have to be contentious. It is a voluntary process, which means the school district doesn't have to participate if they don't want to. But most do choose to participate because it's such an effective way to resolve disputes. The state provides an impartial mediator who tries to help the parents and the district reach an agreement. And the good news is, the mediator's services are free to the parents. Well, yes, but the parents still have to pay their attorney, right? Nope. No attorneys are involved in the mediation process. Just the parents, the school district, and the mediator. In my opinion, mediation is the best place to start if you and your school district have been unable to resolve an issue on your own. Is there an impact to the child while the parents and the school are trying to work things out? Great question. The procedural safeguards also ensure parents the right to have their child remain in their current placement until the issue is resolved. So that means your friend's daughter will continue to participate in the regular education setting in her middle school? Yes. Nothing about her placement changes until the mediation process is completed. If, at the end of mediation, both the parents and the school district agree that the student can succeed in the regular education setting with the appropriate supports and services, then essentially nothing changes for her. She will remain in the inclusive setting when she goes to middle school. So mediation does sound like a good thing. It is. Oh, that reminds me. I can't visit with you much longer. I'm meeting my friend today for lunch. She needs some help filling out the paperwork to request mediation. It's really important that she does this right so that her daughter is guaranteed the right to stay in her current placement during mediation. She needs to check the box on the Notice of Recommended Placement form saying that she disagrees with the district's recommended placement for her daughter and that she's requesting mediation. She also needs to fill out the state's Due Process Complaint Notice form and send that to the school as well. You really are amazing, Maria, with all that you do to help fellow parents navigate the special education maze. <laughs> you know, I had some good mentors along the way. I guess this is my way of paying back those who helped me when I was struggling to understand the system. Well, good luck to your friend, and let's get together with the kids soon, after school lets out. Yes, that sounds great. <laughs>